This is the plaintiff, Roger Weiss. He says he took his car into the defendant's shop for a routine oil change. And when he got the car back, the check engine light was on. The defendant's workers broke his gas detection pump, which equalizes the pressure in the gas tank. It cost him a whole heap of money and time to get it repaired, because the stubborn defendant refused to fix his employees' mistakes. And he's here suing for the $1,211.17 he's owed. This is the defendant, Philip. He says the difficult, surly plaintiff has an old car with 200,000 miles on it, and things are about to go wrong on cars as old as his. He tried working with the plaintiff best he could, but the guy's attitude and demeanor are a big turnoff. That's why they're in court. Bottom line, he did nothing to mess up the plaintiff's car and owes him nothing. He's accused of being full of gas. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff took his car to the defendant's shop for an oil change and says they damaged the gas detection pump. But the defendant says the car's got 200,000 miles, so it please, on. it's the case of oil's not well. Thank you, Douglas. Roger Weiss, you are suing Philip. You've asked us not to mention the company name or your last name. You're the owner? Correct. You're suing Phillips Auto Repair Center for $1,211.17 that you say he owes you for damaging your car and wasting your time. Tell me what happened. Your Honor, on April 17th, I went into a car care center that was owned by Phillips, and I had a coupon for a $19 oil change. And I've done this with, because it's a corporate company, I've done this many, many times over the lifetime of a car, and this car has 194,000 miles on it. I bought, it's a Volvo, I picked it up in Europe, I drove it around Europe. I'm the only driver on the car, it's my car and I really like it. So I bring it in for a routine oil change, and you know, I give the assistant manager, the manager who's standing there, the coupon, they put the car up on the lift, lift right? And the gentleman explains to me that because it's a European car or this or that, I should have a $120 oil change. This is Wait, what he said you should have a $120 oil change instead of what? A 1995 oil change. Okay. And I understand what he's saying. He's, he wanted me to put synthetic oil in and this and that, but the car is run on regular oil for 194,000 so miles. So you say I'm the customer, I want the $19 one. Right. Okay. So there's like a discrepancy and he makes me sign a waiver. Okay, well, what's a discrepancy? You know, he's saying, uh, I'm not going to let you use the coupon because uh, I'm not making enough money here and this, you know what I mean? He it's, said that? Yeah, yeah, it's like he's, he's Okay, like who's the person saying that? The assistant manager, not Phil, no. Okay. And I said to him, you know, I said, well, I had the oil change for 1995 in California, in Colorado, you know, in Kansas. You know, I drive a lot, you know, so he says to me, yeah, well, this ain't Colorado and this ain't Kansas. So what did he say? Because I'll let you, I'll do the oil change because I presented to him all these other corporate receipts. Right. And he says, but I'm going to have to charge you more for this and more for that. So What's I'm, this and that? Like an extra 10 or $12. For what? For like a, a gas filter and for an extra quart of oil. Did the coupon cover an extra quart of oil in a gas filter? It, it covered the oil filter. It didn't cover the extra quart of oil. So the things he was charging you extra for, were any of them included in the coupon? Yes. But you agreed to go ahead and pay extra? Exactly. Okay. So now he changes your oil, and then what happens? Okay. So while the process of them changing the oil goes on, I'm sitting there, and uh, these two guys come out, who are the mechanics in the back, and they're young kids, and they, they're looking at me, and they're pointing their finger at me, and they're acting like wise guys. How? I, like, hey, you know, <laughs> look at you, you know, like, like three jerks. I mean, they're, they're like looking at me and laughing. And pointing at, at you and yeah, laughing? Yeah, pointing at me and laughing at me. What and, are they saying? They're not really saying anything. They're just looking at me and pointing at me and laughing. And they're employees of the place? Right. The two, the two mechanics in the back and the assistant manager. Like, there's a joke going on, and I'm the only one who's not aware of it. Okay. So, you know, it's like, uh, what am I going to do? I'm in the middle of this. Best thing for me to do is to finish it and get my car and get out of it. Okay. Right? So I, uh, I'm, I sit down, and about five minutes later, an elderly lady, maybe between 75 and 80 years old, comes in. And she seems like a very, very nice lady. And she goes up to the assistant manager, and she says to him, the, yesterday I had my oil changed in the car. I had some work done on the car. Everything was perfect. He gave me the to-go light, and now uh, I brought in my car to the Department of Motor Vehicles to have it inspected, and the engine light's on, 
and I, I don't know what to do. You know, she's, she's destroyed. So the assistant manager says, it's not a big deal. It happens over here all the time. Your uh, gas cap is loose. I'm going to go outside and tighten your gas cap, and then everything will be perfect. Drive down to Atlantic City. Why am I hearing all this? Because it's crazy. It's no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Okay, okay. given. But now here's okay. what I'm trying to okay. understand. So the lady comes in, and why are you telling me about the lady's problems? Because 24 hours later, my angel light goes on now. And I call up the guy, and I go, what's going on? You know, now it's like I'm saying, the lady and the laughing, and, you know, there's something going on here. So the guy says to me, oh, it happens around here all the time. Just go. Who did you talk to that time? The same says, guy. It the happens same. around here all the time. Because I have to tell you, I deal with people all my life. And I find that most people are very reluctant to take responsibility for something that happens around there all the time. They usually don't say, ah, yeah, we screw up all the time. That usually doesn't happen. Right. And then what? I said, well, what's, what's going on? What, what's going on? He goes, and he go, says. Go out, tighten the gas cap. And everything will be fine. And was it fine? Well, the gas cap was ajar. A what? Ajar, loose, off. Okay, so did you tighten the gas cap? I did. And then what? Went so through then the I drive was, cycle? Did right, the well, light go away? No. So then you take the car to Volvo, right? Well, I called up Phil. I called up corporate a couple of times. I begged Phil to help me. In the middle of this, Phil says to me, listen, you know, uh, I'll give you, he signs a document, and he says to me, uh, I'll, I'll buy you a new gas cap. Mm -hmm and I'll give you credit for the oil change. So I Let said, me see the document. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so go on. Okay. And did he buy you a new gas cap? I, I never saw a credit for it on the credit card, so I, I don't know. And did he uh, refund your money on the oil change? I never saw a credit for it on the credit card, but I assume he did it. It's not that big a deal. All right, so go on. Okay, so this is about two weeks or three weeks into it. So he goes, just drive, now that you got the new gas cap, just drive a couple drive cycles, and so I drove to the city. Did it fix it? No. All right, now you take it to Volvo. What does Volvo tell you? Volvo explains to me that since the gas cap was off, the pump kept pumping and pumping and pumping, and it wore out and broke. Let me see that I'm writing from Volvo. Yes, ma'am. So you now want him to pay the amount that Volvo charged to replace that part. You're also suing for the gas cap. Yeah, I don't know whether that's, yeah. I don't well, know. No, you need to know. You need to look at your credit card and show me, look, Judge, they didn't right, give well, me credit void, for it. Then void the gas cap. Okay, void the gas cap and the oil change. Right. Did you give him credit for that I stuff? I did. I have a copy which I submitted. Well, that's Great. All right, but. and then, so, but you're suing for the amount Volvo charged you to fix um, that 10-year-old car's what? It's called the leak detection pump. The leak detection pump. All right, let me uh, hear from you. I, like uh, Roger said, I was on vacation at the time it came in for the oil change. Um, when I returned from vacation, my manager said that he had this concern with, uh, with Mr. Weiss and said he'll probably be calling during the week. He described a much friendlier customer service experience from uh, our point of view, did mention how another customer came in. Mr. Weiss was interjecting himself into that conversation and making it more, very difficult for him to have a conversation with another customer. Um, Yes, we recommended a synthetic oil change for $69 because the car is a turbo. The tur turbocharger runs at a higher temperature. Um, after Mr. Weiss was adamant that he had other oil changes, one at our, our franchise in California in 2017 and one in 2015 at a franchise in Colorado, and then we'd be the third one by our franchise, he said, okay, I'll do it for the 1995 with an upcharge for the cartridge filter. So. Mr. Weiss comes by the shop probably a week later. I'm there, we talk, and he tells me that his check engine light uh, is on and that it's been diagnosed at a, I wanna say a big box retail store, maybe in AutoZone or Advanced to do it for free. That's the gas cap that is a problem. So I listened to the story about the poor customer service he received, tried to empathize with him, tried to apologize, it should not have been nearly as bad as that. The truth is somewhere between what Mr. Weiss describes and what my manager describes. Um, I offered to re refund uh, the amount for the oil change, and I said, to be extra kind, I say, go buy a gas cap at Volvo, send me the receipt, I'll pay for the gas cap. Okay, and did you? I did. I he did. did send you a receipt? No, we talked on the phone. He said it's about $39. I said, and okay. so you, you refunded to his credit card another $39? Uh, at one time, I, re I refunded $39 for that and $30 for 
The oil um, change. The oil change together on one receipt. So you thought that was going to be the end of it. You that thought you goal. two had settled your dispute. I did not and ask him to sign so, it. So um, question number one, how is that not what we call in the law an accord and satisfaction where two people settle their dispute? They're giving you something because of your complaint. That's supposed to be the end of it. So is it common that you take your car into a repair shop for one thing and when it comes out, something else is damaged? You always leave spending more money at a at a car shop. That's why. Well, but spending more money is one thing. But is it typical that they fix one thing and another thing breaks? No, they just take advantage of you. So you just think it's fraud. You got it. Can anybody think of a an honest reason why other things might break with a car that's 200,000 miles on it? Uh, well, 200,000 miles, there it is right there. I had a car that I had 185,000 miles. I had to get the engine changed in it. And when I got that done, they found another problem that was not even relevant at the first time. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. Did you take it to Volvo after or before you settled it? After. Well, maybe you shouldn't settle things so quickly. So let's just assume that's good customer service. He's trying to, you know, be nice or whatever and get, keep a customer. How are you proving to me that your repairs at Volvo were their fault? When I asked you, where's all the stuff that Vo you say Volvo said, and you handed me a piece of paper with typing on it. What is this? When I went in... Where did this come from? Uh, in the internet. Right. Okay. I need it from an expert to say that they did something wrong and it caused you harm. That is how a lawsuit works. You have the burden of proving as a plaintiff that it is more likely than not that something they did caused you to be damaged to the tune of 500 and something dollars. Yes, ma'am. Why would I believe that they're changing your oil, particularly when, by the way, you're like, you know, you've got this like kind of nutty story about how they're pointing at me and laughing, so this is a prank. They did a prank, like you thought it was on purpose. And then now you're coming to me with Volvo's $543 repair for a defective pump, was it? In your 10-year-old car, and instead of just paying for it, you've actually brought a lawsuit with zero evidence that they did something other than hurt your sensibilities and make you feel uncomfortable, Man. which the guy already gave you credit for. Okay, our work is done here. Verdict for the defendant. So the plaintiff, Mr. Weiss, is on his way out of the courtroom. That did not go so well for you, did it? No, it didn't. You just didn't have the evidence to convince the judge. Okay. feel sorry for you. How about your car? What shape's it in right now? It runs perfect. How old is it? Uh, Ten years. Just 10? And you have almost 200,000 miles on it? Yeah. Okay. You're going to keep it going for a while? It's a good car. Okay, good enough. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You yeah. too. Everybody knows. Volvo's run forever. That's what they say. Anyway, here comes Philip, the uh, defendant. What can I ask you? <laughs> I know. Just, just as we expected. Uh, there was nothing that my guys did that was, that was wrong, except provide poor customer service, which I compensated him with. Okay, well, good enough. Thank well, you very much. congratulations. Okay. You. Harvey, what you think? Okay, Doug, uh, there is something that a lot of states have called the uh, Bureau of Automotive Repairs. They license repair shops, and they can mediate disputes between customers and repair shops, and they might help you get your money if you're really in the right, uh, short of going to court. 